Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel and if this is your very first time, welcome. I'm Bonnie, Old Soul Mermaid and today's video is another look at my deck collection but today we'll be looking at my Lenormand decks. So let's get right into it. The first one, and I'm going to zoom down because these decks are small is the Aquarian Lenormand Resurrected by Marie Bento, known as Divine Muses. She's the cr creator of the Antiquarian Tarot and also the Divine Muses Oracle and also the Lua Lenormand and Tarot. Now, this deck comes in a beautiful, beautiful box, a uh, tin box. And it does come with a number of extra cards for uh, the gentleman and the lady, <clears throat> which is always a good thing. These are the beautiful backs. Um, if you've been on my channel long enough, seen enough of my videos, you know that I love Marie Bento's decks. Anything with old art and this is great cardstock too it's a linen finish linen type finish the antiquing the old uh, imagery it's great because it also has the playing card uh, equivalent that looks to be a to me to be a picture of Winston Churchill when he was a baby or that child looks very much like Winston Churchill as a baby. But look at the, the distressing, the antiquing. I just, this is one of my favorite decks. Let me know in the comments below how you are with uh, Lenormand. Is it one of your preferred forms of divination. I am still trying to perfect and hone my skills just like I am my tarot. And don't you love what she did with this whip? Very creative. She's a master of collage, I think, in my opinion. Yes, let me know what you think um, and also where you are in your Lenormand studies? Is it your preferred form of divination? Is it something you want to get into? Maybe you're looking at these cards, um, trying to decide what kind of deck you like. So this has a vintage, old aesthetic. Sometimes it's not everybody's cup of tea. You know, we all like different things, but it is very much mine. So that is the Antiquarian Lenormand by Marie Bento. And while I'm on Marie Bento decks, we are going to go to her second Lenormand, the Lua Lenormand, which is, uh, she came out with it just recently, a, a few months ago, with her tarot deck. It is also in a nice, I love when Lenormand decks come this way in a tin box. Now that I have a full unboxing of this deck, the great thing about this deck, I will tell you off the bat, look at all these extra cards. These are all extra cards for the lady and gentleman and an extra card for the child. Yeah, you get all of these. Um, I think it's more than the extras that came with the an Antiquarian Lenormand. She always gives extra cards. Always thinking about diversity. This is a black and white deck. It's not a linen cardstock finish. If you're thinking um, maybe make playing cards or a nice Llewellyn, it, it, it's a very nice... Um, easy to shuffle cardstock. Uh, her Lenormand and tarot decks are from 19th century etchings. And uh, it's beautiful. 
beautiful. I There is a teeny tiny mini version of this deck as well, which I have. But you can see the images better here. And I do have a full unboxing of this deck with, I did it in conjunction with the tarot because I got them at the same time. So that is on my channel, not too far back. You can look at my playlist for unboxings. I love this tarot and the Lenormand deck. And that is the Lua Lenormand by Marie Bento. Next, we are going to take a look at the Green Glyphs Lenormand. Again, I have a full unboxing of this deck on my channel. But this was a Kickstarter. It's by James R. Eads. Look at the beautiful production. You also, this is a magnetic closure box, but you get a really nice book with really enough information to get you started. And I love that the printing is nice and big for those of us with old eyes. It really is a wonderful reference book to come with a deck. This deck was a Kickstarter production. I got in on the early bird. I think it was like $20, $25 with the early bird. It was really a great value. I do believe you can still get this on his site. Um, maybe it's $30 now, but you get a lot for that cost. It is an indie deck. Came with extra cards which is great. And these are very modern, minimalistic drawings. And you will see that the neutral cards are one color, the positive cards are one color, and the negative cards are one color. And, oh, I forgot to show you great backs and this they come with rose gold edging which sometimes makes it a little bit hard to flip through but um the cardstock is rose petal it's that matte super matte rose petal that you know the um oh let's see the Indie decks are coming out with, like the the Indie Lights series, the Indie Muse. It's that kind of cardstock. Very beautiful, very luxe. Um, you get the, the corresponding playing card right there, unobtrusive. Great color palette with this deck. There's just a few, very few colors used. As you can see, this is luxurious to the touch. Very inclusive with the extra cards. He has extra cards for the gentleman and the lady. He has a person card. Um, they're done in silhouette, so you know nobody is left out. Okay, that is the Green Glyphs Lenormand by James R. Eads. He is the creator of the Prisma and Light Visions Tarot, and he's coming out with his, I believe, Cosmovisions Oracle very soon. Looking forward to that. All right, I keep the rest, um, well, most of my Lenormand decks in these two pencil bags because they are smaller and easily portable. I have um, a few decks in each of these bags. My alchemy bag, my Shakespeare quote bag. So we will start, I'll start pulling decks out of these bags. Let's start with a classic. This is the Bluebird Lenormand by Stuart Kaplan. And we'll just come on in a little bit. <clears throat> these tuck boxes are sometimes hard to get open. This is a classic art deck. It does come with a pretty um, decent white book. This should have been in my U.S. Games video deck. I forgot about it because I keep 
the deck in a pouch. I completely forgot. But this is very classic, uh, kind of tea stained, distressed, Lenormand done in the classic fashion. And the thing I like about this deck is that it has a little saying of first to help you uh, remember the meanings. So if you're beginning, I would highly recommend this deck. You may not love the classic. If you if you love things more with a modern aesthetic, this may not be your jam. But I think for learning, having the little verse on the on the uh, front is very very beneficial. Like for instance, the anchor sign of a stable event bask in basked in sunshine, secure and content. When the anchor some distance away from you, hope will fade and leave life askew. So you see, and I don't know if you're picking this up, but this is wonderfully, you know, distressed, tea stained, very classic. You get the card correspondent and, and the verse. And I think it's a wonderful, great deck for beginners. And it doesn't break the bank. You can get this off of Amazon. I believe I picked my copy up at a local metaphysical shop and, uh, this was my second, yes, my second Linramon. I'll show you what my first one was. Something my husband picked up for me. And uh, this is a wonderful deck for beginners. Great cardstock, nice US Games cardstock. But if you like classic classical imagery, this is a great deck. And I just think a great deck for um, beginners to start with. This is an indie deck. And it came in this actual bag. And it is the Minute Lenormand by Tish. Is it Hollingster? Hollister? Hollister. I believe it's Hollister. <laughs> Sorry about that. But this deck, and again, there's a full unboxing on my channel with this. I did it in conjunction with um, Tish's tarot deck. I bought them both at the same time. Here are the backs. I love this imagery. Now she created the images for this and her tarot in about five minutes. It was a challenge that she put on herself and she did it with like, like markers, art markers or Sharpie markers. And I just think it's amazing that she could do this in just a few minutes. You know, goals, right? Now, the only thing I will say that I'm, I'm not crazy about is cardstock. Cardstock in this is very, very flimsy, papery. Uh, there's no core whatsoever. So I have to be careful when I shuffle. But I do love the art. You know, it's an indie deck, so it is at a higher price point. Um, I don't know if it's available on her Etsy shop anymore. I think this is the second edition. You know, some of the indie creators go and they run out and then they bring their their decks back again. And that's what happened. I got this over the summer, this Enter Tarot deck. But I love the imagery. I really do love the imagery. Whimsical, colorful, it's beautiful, and it's a great deck. And I'm happy to have it in my collection. Next, out of the bag, is the Stretch Lenormand by Joseph E. Stretch. He is the creator of the Stretch Tarot, which I've had, you guys, on my wish list forever. And I haven't gotten it yet. It has everything I like. Old art, collage, um, and I haven't gotten it yet. You know, don't have unlimited funds. <laughs> so these are the simple backs. Beautiful, right? Just very, very simple. Um, this was a Kickstarter campaign deck. If you spent a little more, you got a beautiful storage box. Um, he didn't quite make his gold goal for edging, which I know he wanted to do. So I 
I don't know if my phone is going to pick this up, but I took some distress ink, a distress ink pad, and just kind of went along this and kind to give it an aged look. I think maybe it was vintage photo and antique linen I kind of combined. Or maybe it was walnut stain, but one of those things just to give it to match the front and the sides. Now he did a wonderful job of collage. There's, you can see the top layer is a dictionary page. Then he put on top of that, the card correspondence. So you can see the card. Then he put a photograph. And then you can see is the, with the dictionary print, he put what the card is. So this is the writer. I can tell you, I think that the image on this, the person in this photograph is a famous courtesan. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it is Catherine Walters, better known as Skittles in her time, a mistress of many of the aristocracy, but also of Edward VII, uh, Queen Victoria's son. She was known for cutting a fine figure on a horse and also for her horsemanship skills. She was the envy of the aristocratic lady. She had her writing habits tailored within a skinch of, inch of their lives, very close to the body where men and women wondered if she were wearing any undergarments underneath. So I I think that's her. If, if you know if it's not her, let me know, but I'm pretty sure that's who that is. That's just a little, a little tidbit of trivia if I got the right person. But as you can see, again, the correspondence, a playing card, the imagery. This is totally my jam. I know it's not everybody's aesthetic. And let me know in the comments what you think so far of these decks. Were you aware of any of them? Are you just getting curious about Lenormand? I think this is like one of the most stunning coffin cards. Um, a lot of the times in Victorian Edwardian times, the only time that people would have a, a photograph taken of their loved one was at death. Yeah, very, very sad. I love this bouquet. I don't know if this is still available on his website. I think his his tarot deck is. I'm not certain. One of my favorite foxes. Isn't it beautiful? And that is the Stretch Lenormand by Joseph E. Stretch. Next, out of the bag is the Augenblick Lenormand by Shannon Loftus. She is the creator of the Augenblick Lenormand sorry, or uh, Oracle and Tarot decks. I believe she is creating another Tarot deck. I don't think this deck is available. She did a limited run and what she does is, um, depending on, on demand is how she prints. And if she, she prints out her, her deck is, and her Oracle deck have been out for a while. And look at these backs. This matches her Oracle and um, tarot deck, this black lace. Uh, so she prints on demand. I don't think there's any of these or her tarot on her deck. On her, on her website. But I think the, there's still some of the Oracle deck. These images were curated from the, the Library of Congress. She does a great job. I'm very excited for her, um, her new tarot deck whenever that comes out. But you'll have to look at her website. Look for Albion Bleak Tarot. And uh, she will, she, you know, she may print. Follow her on Instagram. And she, she often comes out as, you know, I'm going to be printing some more decks. Let me know if you want one. You know, that's the plight of the indie, 
creator, you know. And I think this is interesting. Uh, instead of fox, this looks to be an, a lynx or a bobcat of some kind. I love this bear. The stars. The stork. And the stork is part of this fountain here, ready to take flight. I like... I like the depictions of storks ready to take flight instead of just standing still. I love this dog. So that is the Augenblick Lenormand by Shannon Loftus. Next on the list is Mademoiselle Lenormand. It's known as the Piatnik deck. And I can't, don't ask me to pronounce all that. Uh, this, it's German or Austrian. Um, this is a deck that my husband, this was my first Lenormand deck. My husband was on a playing card website. They were having a sale and he asked me if I wanted this deck and it was really super cheap. And I said, of course. And that was my first introduction to Lenormand. Classic imagery. Decent cardstock. You get the card insert. Look at those backs are very pretty. If you are into classic Lenormand, this is a, a classic deck. Let me know if you know, is this the deck used for the game of hope? Um... I've seen this deck in that game tied together. But beautiful, beautiful paintings. And you get the card. Open book. Coffin. And the key. This was very inexpensive. I think my husband got it for me. It was like five or six dollars. I believe it's also available on Amazon as well. This is the Sawyer's Lenormand by Jamie Sawyer. This is the first edition. I know on her website she has a second edition. I do not know how they differ, how much they differ, but I love, 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 love this deck. If I can get this card out, I would love it even more. Those are the wonderful backs. These are the wonderful fronts. I did edge it in black. Thought it turned out pretty well. This is a bright, colorful, modern depiction of the Le Normand. She, Jamie's a tattoo artist among the other wonderful artistic endeavors you, you can see all over her Etsy shop. Yeah, I don't know. I think the backs may have changed. I don't know if any of the artwork has changed. This is one of my favorite child cards. Uh, I've had three babies. These it's like you can never have too many because if you give it to your kid while they're in a stroller, they will throw it out. And you're wondering where the heck did the sippy cup go? They're all over your house. You know, you leave them everywhere at the store, at the grocery, uh, the grocery store, they're everywhere and you lose them. So you have to buy them in bulk. But this is, a, yes, back to the Sawyer's Lenormand. Very, very modern, very, very colorful. It's really, oh, I can't pick a favorite. You know, you can't pick a favorite. I, said, I was going to say this is my favorite modern deck, but I really, really love the green glyphs too, so... That is the Sawyer's Lenormand by Jamie Sawyer. I believe this showed up in my US Games deck video. It's a mass market deck, Under the Roses by uh, Kendra Hertau and Katrina Hill.
great favorite. I know if you read Lenormand, it's in many of your collections. This is kind of a nice mix with, uh, oh, and I love these backs. These are beautiful backs. With a little bit of modern and classical art. Uh, you do have the, the playing card in the corner, which is great. I love this tea stained, neutral aesthetic of this deck. I like look, the ship. You have travel, exploration. If you can see the words that are in the background, move. And then also in the... Um, I think it's practically all the cards. You have some keywords in the background, which also helps like the Bluebird Lenormand if you're beginning. That's a great feature of this deck. Kind of faint, so if you have, um, you know, not so good eyes eyesight, you might miss it. It's like in this grave card, instead of the coffin, it's a little bit more, it's harder to see the keywords, but some of them, they're very easy to see. Great US Games cardstock, full of life. I love the owls in this. It's a great, great deck. Very inexpensive. It's popular. You can get it off of Amazon or a local bookstore. We are going to go through this one really quickly because it did pop up in my US Games deck video. It is the Dreaming Way Lenormand. But in case you did not see that video, this is a great wonderful mass market deck. Look at these sweet backs. Fun, whimsical, again full of color. I like, see this is great about this card because you can kind of do a directional um, reading with this because the rider is facing one way and the horse is facing the other. So you kind of get two directions instead of having, you know, two cards. Tower, great garden card. This has great US Games card stock. Very, very vibrant. I love, this is like one of my favorites for the mice. Very simple heart, but so beautiful. And look at the ring, the ring and all that it entails. The book. Great, great, great little Lenormand deck. So again, this is another deck that is easily available on Amazon or your local book retailer. Right, another deck that showed up in my US Games uh, video is the Celtic Lenormand, but I'm bringing it out again just in case you didn't see that video. And if you're brand new to Lenormand, a uh, nice chunky book. This is a great book. Um, if you are just learning and you can't, you know, maybe swing getting a deck and a book to learn Lenormand, this is a great economical under $20 and this book is chock full of information on uh, reading with Lenormand. This deck is also wonderful because it comes with a number of extra cards which I keep on the bottom there. Love the owls. If you love Druid, Celtic, Pagan imagery. This is beautiful, beautiful artwork. It's a classic 
if you do read with Lenormand, I know that many of you already have this in your collection. So I'm just going to flip through a few cards if you are new and curious. And that is the Celtic Lenormand by Chloe McCracken and Will Worthington. Last but not least is probably my sweetest Lenormand and maybe even my most treasured. I found this little deck in this bag at my local half price books all alone with just a $5 price sticker on it. So I had the employee open the tarot cabinet for me. And in there was this deck. Those are the backs. And it is Riders Le Normand. I had never heard of this before and I have found very little information about it. But Ryder, Ryder George is the son of the Lenormand luminary, Rana George. And he created this deck when he was eight years old, back, I think it's 2012, so he's older now. But it is his child-like, or childhood drawings, and I think it is very, very sweet. You get a card about the history of it, how it came to be, he worked really hard on every card during his Thanksgiving and Christmas breaks in 2012 and in weekends in between. He also, it also says that he likes to use Lenormand, tarot, animal cards, oracle, stones, and any other tool he can get his hands on. His readings are simple, short, precise, funny, and accurate, so people always want to come back for more. And instead of a booklet, you get his meanings, and they are simple and concise. So for the writer, you get information, messenger, visitor. So you get a number of these cards. Also, uh, unique to this deck, he designed two writer cards facing in different directions, which I think is super, super cute. just childlike drawings. He put in the card correspondent in there, the equivalent card. This is so much better than I could do. Even my hearts won't look that good. I'm wondering what, what can he do now? What does his art look like now that he's probably, what, about 16? And I'm really wondering if he if he's lost his interest in cards and art, you know, kids, what they like when they're kids, they don't, it doesn't necessarily carry over when they grow up, you know, and when, when they get to high school, they are into different things. But, you know, if he's starting with this, what could his artwork look like now? If he redid his Lenormand deck, what would it look like now? I just wonder. And I'm just flipping through this really quick because I don't have an unboxing. There was no box included. I don't know the history, how this was funded, you know, how it came to be. How could you originally buy it? Um, like I said, it just came in that little red bag. I'm wondering if the, you get two options for... The lady card, if one of these could be his mother. I don't know what Rana George looks like. But it's so innocent and so pure and so sweet and to the point. This is like one of my most treasured finds. I love the neutrality of the border. It's great cardstock, by the way, too. Um like better I would say better than a Llewellyn card stock but kind of that thick maybe a little bit thicker 
Yeah, I'm just going to flip through the end because I don't know how many, if there's any unboxings of this deck on the interwebbings and on YouTube. So that is Writer's Lenormand by Writer George at the time. At the time that he was eight years old. All right, everyone, that concludes the look at my Lenormand collection. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you are new to the system, if it's your preferred system, if you have any of these decks. Let me know what you think in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And until next time, have a wonderful day.